Hi everyone, welcome to another video of Intro to Machine Learning. Uh, in this video, I'll be talking about k-means clustering, which is a different machine learning technique than the ones that we've uh, talked about before. So this is the first clustering technique that we are talking in this uh, course. Uh, we'll talk about the mathematical interpretation, that is where the idea comes from. I wouldn't go into a ton of detail of uh, the math behind it, but we'll talk about the overall intuition. And then we'll look at a Python implementation of k-means clustering. Uh, okay, so in general, what is clustering? It is a set of techniques that form groups or sections, uh, or to be more specific, clusters in data. Uh, essentially, we look for similarity in observations. And one thing to remember is that we do not have a right or wrong answer to anything, right? So we do not have uh, the dependent variable. This is something that you should remember. Right, so we do not have the dependent variable, and we are still trying to find patterns in the data uh, based on the features that we have. Okay, it's really useful for problems that involve segmentations, as we shall see today in the example that we are looking at. And uh, one of the common examples that is uh, uh, that is a real-world application of clustering is to find a particular type of customer, uh, how a particular type of customer will respond to a specific type of advertising, right? So basically segment them into different categories based on their features. So that's one application. Now, as we said, clustering is another set of techniques and there are other clustering techniques available, but today I'm talking about K-means clustering. Okay, so there are two types that we'll talk in this course and today this is K-means clustering, as I said. So what is this K-means clustering? Um, this is a distribution of data, right, the output, and let's say we are visualizing it with two variables, x1 and x2, right, and this is my data. Now, the clustered data, the final clustered data would look something like this. That means we have um, identified here three different categories of um, data in the sense that we can segment it into three different categories, as you can see, or clusters, right? So look at this. Uh, which are color coded here. So red, green, and blue, right? So k-means clustering is a method that aims to partition or segment, as we saw here, um, all your observations, let's say n observations, into k clusters. So k is equal to my three, and n is my number of observations, right? And this segregation is done based on uh, the nearest mean, which is also known as a centroid. Right, so we essentially come up with a centroid that uh, exists somewhere within each of these clusters. Now, this idea of centroid will become clear when we look at the actual step-by-step -step, step, uh, implementation of this algorithm. So let's go there and see. Um, yeah, so a little bit about how we, so I, I said uh, we have something called centroids, which is the mean, right? And how do we come up with that mean, with that value? Uh, so the short answer to that is we randomly come up with each of these centroids, but the final goal of any k-means clustering algorithm is that given a set of observations, so let's say the observations are x1, x2, xn, and uh, let's say we have d uh, dimensional vector, which are nothing but features, right? K-means clustering will partition these observations into k sets, right? So k sets or clusters, so as to minimize the within cluster sum of squares. Okay, so this is an important term and we will use this throughout. WCSS, we are trying to minimize the sum, essentially, of the, the, the sum of squares uh, that we calculate with respect to centroids for every cluster, right? And in other words, you can say that we are trying to minimize the overall variance. Okay, so how does this, this take place? Uh, let's look at the steps first. So what will happen is, I will choose a value of k, which is the number of clusters, and this is going to be an integer value. For instance, here in the previous example, let's say I choose the value of k as three, right? And then based on that value of k, uh, I will select k random centroids. Now, this is important. Let's say this was my data here, this one, and randomly I chose one centroid here, one centroid here, and one centroid here. Now what happens is, because I decided k, which is my input parameter, was equal to three, right? I'm going to calculate the distance of each of these points, and this distance, most of the times is Euclidean, can be something else as well, right? So you can go into the details of what this can be. Let's assume that this is Euclidean. So I'm going to calculate the distance uh, 
uh, with all of these points with each of these centroids and I'm going to determine uh, which ones are the closest to a given centroid, right? And what will happen and how this is done is let me actually show you somewhere in a picture uh, here. Uh, usually there is a, a quick technique to do that. Let's say my data was something like this. I'm simplifying this really uh, so that uh, it's easier to understand. Let's say this, is, this was my data, right? And I chose randomly this as a centroid and this as a centroid. This is totally random. What we do is we join this with a straight line, these two points, and draw a perpendicular to this right midway, right? So this has to be a 90 degrees. This is how this is done. And the points on the, let's say this is centroid one and this is centroid two. So the points on this side of the line, they usually belong uh, to this centroid and the points on this side belong to this centroid two. Okay. So this is the first iteration. What happens is now I have two clusters, right? This is this is the uh, the first cluster and this is the second cluster. Now what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to recalculate my centroid here, which is the mean, wherever it lies. So maybe the new mean will lie somewhere here, right? So my, my centroid gets shifted here and then the new mean for this cluster lies here. And then so the new mean gets shifted here. So based on this new shift, I will have to again join these two centroids, uh, draw a perpendicular line and then keep... Uh, segregating the clusters until this new um, uh, until this jump to a new centroid uh, stops the reassignment of points because you can tell right if I found two new centroids based on new calculations my perpendicular will be something like this so the points that belong to this um, uh, centroid earlier or this cluster earlier might go into this cluster right so this will keep happening until this reassignment of points stops so this is the high level idea of how this is happening, right? This is what this is talking about. Assign the data points to the nearest closest centroid based on some distance measure. Mostly it is Euclidean. And this, by the way, is a quick technique of, of getting them separated into two parts. But essentially what's happening in each cluster is that we are literally calculating the distance of each of the points from this centroid. Right, so the method that I just talked about that, that, that we can join the two centroids and draw a perpendicular line, this is a geometric technique. This is a known geometric technique uh, such that we can quickly segregate, segregate into two parts. But essentially, this is leading us to finding the distance of each of the points with each of the centroids and minimizing the sum squared distance. So essentially, we are trying to minimize the WCSF in every uh, iteration. Okay, this was just to make you better understand. Now, again, we'll compute the within cluster distance, find the new centroid of each cluster, and check if the classified points still belong to the same cluster. If not, then repeat this previous step and go on, right? So this is how k-means clustering actually works. It's a very simple intuition. Uh, just remember, you're trying to minimize the within cluster sum squares, okay? So this is what k-means clustering uh, algorithm um, is all about. This is the basic idea. Okay, so um, now the, the question arises about how do we initialize these centroids? Now, let me review that. Uh, remember I said if this is how my data is uh, separated, right? I randomly select some two centroids and then I try to find the distance of each of these points uh, with these and then based on the, the sum squares minimum distance, I create clusters, right? This is the high level idea. Now, how did I come up with the idea of having a centroid here versus having centroids here or here, right? So the sum initialization happens and that's completely random. That can sometimes lead to issues. For instance, here, let's say I randomly, I can see that there are three clusters, right? I can literally like visualize that there are three clusters, but let's say I decided, um, the, uh, randomly that this these are my centroids right this will most likely lead to the this kind of clustering right so we'll have two clusters here and one cluster here right so all these issues can arise and therefore we have a technique which is called k means plus plus and this is outside the scope of this video and this course but you can uh, find this uh, like a good description of this on wikipedia and this is a technique that helps us uh, deal with this to get the best uh, initialization possible. Okay, so that's the random initialization trap and K means plus plus is a technique, is a technique that helps us deal with that. Now, the second question that arises is how do we select 
this k right i said i want to select k equals 3 what if i want to wanted to select k equals 2 right how do we decide which is the best k now if you remember by definition we are trying to minimize our wcss which is within cluster sum of squares right so one technique which is also known as the elbow method is used to find how many k's should we begin with because k is an input parameter right so the elbow method works something like this here i'm plotting wcss the total within sum of squares for all clusters right so i'm trying to minimize within cluster right so for each cluster i'm trying to minimize the distance with the centroid but what if i sum up this wcss for all clusters right so i, I can plot that versus the number of clusters or number of k now imagine that if i decide that my k equals n if my k the number of clusters equals the number of data points then obviously the sum of this within cluster sum squares would be zero right so this means that as k increases uh, this this wcss almost tends to zero as you can see here right and in fact by like by uh, k equals 11 it comes almost very close to zero right so what we can do for every problem is that we can plot this graph that is WCSS versus the number of clusters and then see where this elbow or the sudden change happens, right? So the sudden change I can see happens here uh, because there is a significant amount of drop in WCSS. So we are obviously trying to minimize it. So there is a drop here, but then I don't see a lot of drop after four. So there is no point in having more clusters, right? Because it definitely... Uh, makes the outcome of those like multiple clusters meaningless because this is saying that what happens when k becomes n that would be the ideal case that wcss becomes zero we don't want that right so therefore based on this elbow technique we stop here when we see that there isn't any more drop in this wcss so this is how we find out how uh, like how many k's should we begin with so these are the two things that you should remember k means plus plus and choosing the right number of k's using the elbow method now finally we are looking at the python implementation i have provided two examples and that's mostly because i just tried to find out data for k means clustering and, and these are the two data sets that came up in kaggle the first one is mall customer data the other one is car data so let's look at both of them and and look at the code Okay, so this is the first one. This is the mall customer data. Let me show you how this looks like here. Uh, essentially, there is there's these customer numbers and then the uh, uh, gender, age, and their annual income and spending score. So these are some of the features. Now, in this example, I'm taking only two features, which is uh, the annual spending and then the spending score. So the spending score is somewhat similar to like you have a credit score. Right? And this will help me segregate the customers and find out whether they will spend something or not or how different types of customers can be uh, segregated based on these two uh, features. Right? So I'm, I'm just focusing on these two features. The other data set that I'm looking at is the cars data set. Again, uh, I found it on Kaggle. Here I'll take, uh, take into account all these features, all like the MPG, cylinders, and, and other information about cars. And... Uh, basically try to segregate based on these features can i segregate different brands uh, based out of different continents right so these are the two different examples here i'm taking all the features uh, in the other example i'm just focusing on two features so let's look at the simple one two features right uh, here i'm just importing the libraries notice i don't have a y here and that goes back to the clustering technique itself i don't have a right and wrong answer here all i'm doing is finding patterns right so i have x and you can see why I have only three and four column because I'm just uh, focusing on two variables. So let me read in the data. Okay, that's done. Now notice here I have scikit-learn.cluster. So that's my library and this is the class k-means. Um, here, the first thing is that I'm following the elbow method to find out the best possible k, right? How do I do that? Just, just focus on this line here. I'm putting it in a for loop. Why? If we go back to our notes here, uh, you can see we have the number of clusters from one up to maybe 11, right? So 10 is the best number possible. So I can go up to uh, size 10 and keep checking WCSS. So that's all I'm doing here in this for loop. And 
came here I'm creating the instance of my class k means number of clusters obviously will change because that's what we're looking at initialization method as we said is k means plus plus random state is only setting up your seed right and then we have to fit my data and then notice this k means dot inertia this gives me the exact value of wcss and i'm putting that in a list which i'm calling wcss so that's all good let's actually go and plot this okay so here it is and you can see this uh, wcss is going significantly down and at, at, a, at about five the drop is not as much right so that's why we decided to have five clusters so notice this is how we train the model now i'll create an instance again all i did was just copy this line here and instead of i i have five because now i know that five is the k that i i need to have rest of the stuff stays say, say, stays the same now notice this one we do not have a y variable here right but i do need some output or some categories in which i can put customers right so that's what this y k means is let me show you what this will have now so let's say i created this right notice this is what this y k means has once i fit when I, once once i did this k means dot fit predict so the, it has these numbers right so notice the numbers range from 0 to 4 because we have five clusters so these are labels for these clusters so for instance like the first customer in my data will be in cluster 4 the second customer will be in cluster 3 and so on right so that's what that's happening there and we created that y now using this y we can plot all these customers versus versus uh, clusters so how do we do that we are familiar with plot dot scatter so this creates a scatter plot it needs an x and a y so i'm going to give it an x and a y right in terms of clusters so in x uh, x is my initial matrix here right this is the one that i created and notice what it has like the first value has to be the row and the second value has to be the column now the column is going to be zero and one because there are only two columns in my x right so zero and one the first one is i think we looked at it the first one was age uh, sorry not age uh, the income and the second one was the spending score right so this is what this is telling us, right? Uh, and then notice this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. These are the exact values that k means has, right? So that's why I'm saying if k means equals 0, pick that customer that belongs to that category, right? And then maybe um, color that red, right? And then label that as cluster 1. So this is like all part of the scatter plot. And then we'll have to do it five times because we have five clusters. The only thing that changes here is the labels for each of these clusters. Uh, just notice that the second value here stays zero for the first um, argument in plot scatter. And then here it stays one because we just have like two uh, values in my X, right? So here, nothing else, nothing fancy. Now you can see this is how the final clusters appear uh, based on uh, my fitted model here. And you can also see the centroids. Okay, so that's that. In the second uh, code in the cars data, the only difference here is that because I used all my variables to create this model, right? I cannot visualize something like this. So I'll have to decide what do I want to visualize. So here I've decided to visualize zero and four which in my original file is something like this, the MPG and the weight, right? So you can just like keep changing these values here. You can select one and two, or zero and four, zero and two, like depending on how do you want to visualize the clusters. So let's quickly run this one also and see the results. This is slight, This is going to be slightly different because here we are running a different kind uh, of, of, like we are just visualizing like two, uh, dimensions all, although my model has like multiple dimensions right so notice i've created this model uh, using all these variables so it's hard to visualize here because i'm not using just two variables uh, the rest of the stuff stays the same the rest i i did exactly the same i have utilized the elbow method and the k means plus plus for initialization okay so that was all about k means clustering if you have questions please ask in the description box below